Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the conclusion to the end of this hadith narrative between uh, the halal is clear, the haram is clear and between them are ambiguous and unclear things and why as I've already explained in the previous six parts why it is a lie and why you should stick to the Quran and the Quran only your safeguard your deliverance is in the Quran and the Quran alone follow anything else than the Quran and you will go astray. And I swear to Allah, the, the more hadith narratives you follow, the farther you go away from the Quran. So here are a few examples, just few from the thousands of examples, which have turned the lives of Muslims a living hell. Everything is haram. Even hanging a frame on your wall is regulated by the sheikhs. The other day I was watching a documentary done in Israel, in, those blessed, in, the, in the blessed land. I know Muslims get touchy when you say Israel, not Palestine. Allah calls it the Holy Land. Let's call it the Holy Land. I saw a documentary done in, the, in Jerusalem in the Holy Land about the Orthodox Jews that live there and that are causing big problems for the state. One of such uh, people, the Orthodox Jews, said that they are not allowed to have phones with them. The rabbis do not allow them to have phones with them. And uh, so the, the journalist asks him, uh, she, she was a woman, she asks him, why, are you, uh, why do you have a phone? He goes, well, I have an exemption from my rabbi. Really? She goes, how did you do that? He goes, well, I went to the rabbi, explained to him why I need a phone, and he gave me the exemption, and I have the phone. So she told him, also oh, now you can free, you are free to do as you will with the phone. He goes, no. It's con I cannot install certain application. I cannot do certain things, but I can do certain things. So the rabbi has regulated for him to have a phone. And then after he gave him a phone, he told him what he can and what he cannot do with that phone. Okay. Guess what? The same thing happens to Muslims. Go to a Salafi house. And I am guilty of this once in my life. You cannot have decoration on your wall. Look at your wall. How many decorations are there? They tell you you can't have the picture of your mother or your father. People that are close to you, you can't have pictures. Why it's haram to have pictures? You cannot do this. You cannot even hang in a picture on your wall for decoration purposes. Cannot be done unless you follow what the sheikhs and the hadith tell you to do. Once you do as they say, then you can have that. Why? It's. it's I've seen people. <laughs> have frames with beautiful picture but uh, the face is mocked up or even cut and so why why is the face uh, totally cut off from the picture it's haram so why do you have the rest of the body <laughs> it's 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 crazy what i have seen in my life but anyhow here are a few examples that are 100 percent halal but turned haram and i will start with owning a car owning a car when, when mr henry ford back in the 18th century invented the car and it was taken to Saudi Arabia, to Egypt, the very first cars in humanity. The sheikhs at that time have made owning a car haram. Why? Because they say they are driven by the jinn. Because they looked inside, they look up, everything to them is iron upon iron and wood and uh, seats, but they don't see any, no horses to them. And because they could not understand how the car functioned, guess what? They made it haram and it stayed haram for decades. Another example, and you know today car is not haram at all, but at one point it was made haram. The sheikhs who made it haram will be held accountable for that statement because they should never ever have done that, especially that Allah, when he spoke about giving us horses, donkeys and mules, he said, and he creates what you do not know. So they should have classified that until we do not know. When the car came to them, they should have looked and they go, wow, Allah would create something else. And it's that. There is no problem with that. It's halal. But no, they went and made it haram for decades. And anyone who drove a car back then was committed a sin. And people, oh God, it's, it's water tap. When you go to the bathroom and you have, or to the kitchen sink and you open the, the tap, water runs free from there, right? If you go to the Arab world, the Arabs call the tap, they call it al Hanafiya. Al Hanafiya. Why they call it Al Hanafiya? It's in reference to the Hanafi school of, of thought. That's the reason why it's called Hanafiya. The story goes like this: In Egypt, back in time, the Maliki school of thought and the Shafi'i school of thought, the, the sheikhs, had a living. They used to sell water to people. 
uh, deliver on your water and uh, so they said uh, once the tap was invented and people could see oh you can have a pipe and water comes here the government in Egypt wanted to put water to go through the pipes the, ha the, the Maliki school of thought and the Shafi'i school of thought issued a fatwa any water that comes out of the tap is haram and you can and if you perform your wudu with it the wudu is invalid Yes, and it went on again for decades. However, the Hanafi school of thought, they said, no, why is it haram? It's halal, it's water. It doesn't matter how the water gets to you. As long as it's pure water, clean water, it's halal. So people then start, now they have two views. The same, a group says it's halal, the other group says it's haram. And people started using water. When someone tells them, why are you using water from that? They go, oh, the Hanafi, Hanafi, Han, until it becomes Hanafiya. The tap in the Muslim world, on the Arab world, is called Hanafiya until today in Saudi Arabia or anything. They will call it Hanafiya. And that's because of that. At one point, it was made haram. Telephone and telegraph lines. The same thing, the Wahhabis of the son of the Salafi of Saudi Arabia, they used to like cowboys uh, d break any poles that had a line of telephone or telegraph because to them it was magic. It was haram to use a telephone back in then. And that carried on until the 70s, 80s when the mobile numbers, uh, phone uh, uh, numbers in uh, early 90s when numbers, they were haram in Saudi Arabia to own a telephone. Use of a compass to see where the east and north and west are, where. And there is a uh, someone, uh, it's in the books of history in Saudi Arabia, uh, a man from Pakistan came to Hajj. And he had walked the land from Pakistan for thousands of miles to get to Mecca. On the way to Mecca, when he arrived near Mecca, the poor guy, he didn't speak Arabic, he spoke Urdu. And you see, if you see how the Urdu people write Arabic, they don't write it in a nice, straight, beautiful. They have a, a different font that they use, a handwriting style. So when they got, the, when they caught him, they asked him, you know, the, where are you from and things like that. And the guy couldn't speak Arabic. He was talking Urdu. The Arabs at that time, the Saudis, interpreted his language as him trying to do sihr, magic on them. And then... He had the compass in his hand because of the English. And they killed him because they thought he was a magician trying to have a spell on them. Compass was haram to use at that time. Maybe it's very far off, 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th, right? Let's come up here to the 20th century. In 1970s and 80s, the satellite dish was haram. Today, every home Every household in Saudi Arabia or anywhere in the Muslim world has got a satellite dish. Even the sheikhs of today, the strong Salafis and things like that, they have their own satellite dish stations. Back in the 70s and 80s, it was haram. And I have heard talks, I have books, I've read books and even was taught to us in Saudi Arabia that it is haram to have a satellite dish. Why? Because it's a window to pornography. They, they just see pornography, they just see the haram stuff. But you know, so satellite dish was at one point haram. The television and the radio. Go to a Salafi house and you don't find a television, much less a radio. Completely cut off the world. Why? Because looking at the face of a man or looking at the face of a woman on television is haram. The radio, the same thing. Hearing, if a wife hears the voice of a man on the radio, it's haram for her. And if a man hears the voice of a woman on the radio, it is haram. It's not haram. But you know, using computers, again, at one point when computers started coming to life, they were haram. And I have witnessed that, and it's incredible. Why? Because the computer is a means to committing sins, and as such, it's haram. Nowadays, it's using the internet, using smartphones. Now, people have learned to ignore the sheikhs, but if you take time to listen to any sheikh in Saudi Arabia, in, uh, not Egypt much, but in Saudi Arabia, the hardcore Salafis, they will tell you the internet is haram. And, and how is it? Look at the Salafi, how they deal with their kids. And do they buy a phone to their kids? The, the, the children will never see a smartphone, much less the internet. Here is another thing that is strange, and they made it haram at one point. Wearing a watch. You should not wear a watch. And if you wore a watch, hand or wrist watch, you should wear it on the, uh, on the right, not on the left. Why? Because the kuffar wear it on the left. 
you hardly ever see a sheikh wearing a watch and if he is wearing a uh, watch go on youtube check where on which hand you're gonna see it on the right hand to them they have to do something different to the kuffar these idiots do not know that we wear the watch on the left hand because we are right with the right hand and it's awkward uh, I've, uh, myself when you have the wrist the, the, the band and you write it's it's very difficult and people put it in the less active hand because we are right-handed we do most things with the right-handed they wear it in the left to get it out of time just watch the, uh, what, look at the time when you need to so if I am left-handed, I wear it on the right hand because my left hand is a predominant hand. But our sheikhs, no, they made it haram to wear on the left one. It's crazy. I'm not going to go, number 10, I'm not going to go about art, music, painting, poetry. The Salafi cult Islam or the Hadith uh, Islam is 100% an enemy of art, any art except poetry and then again poetry is regulated what kind of poetry you can do and what kind of expressing your emotions you have to express your emotions about a tree a rock and if you speak about a woman you have to be extremely delicate otherwise it's haram wearing ties wearing ties is haram in the Salafi cult sphere until now until November 2021 21st century it is haram to wear a tie and watch Salafis and see how they wear a tie wearing gold for men. They say it's haram when in fact it is not haram at all. And this surprises you. And along with number 13, wearing silk as well. It is not haram. I used to love some beautiful ties made of silk. Ah, I used to dream about them, but I couldn't wear them. Why? Because I was pious Salafi and I was an active da'wah sheikh and things like that. <laughs> not gold nor silk are haram furthermore using visa master cards or debit cards in the 70s in the 20th century in the 70s 80s when the visa and master started becoming little bit spread they were 100 percent haram even today including putting money in the bank that's 15 <laughs> it's it's why because of the interest even though the interest that Allah speaks about in the Quran is not the interest that the bank gives you over your money. Because when you get every month two or three pounds, and they call it interest, and you could say, all what the bank is telling you is this. When you put your money with us in the account, we did work with it, we have invested it, and this is the amount that you, you are entitled to. That's all there is to it. But anyhow. Muslims today are still touchy about the interest when in fact that is not what Allah has prohibited quickly the interest that Allah has prohibited is only in one part Allah says in the Quran وقالوا, the people they said the believers and the people إنما البيع مثل الربا. selling trading is like interest and then Allah says وحر... Uh, increase in uh, wages uh, in uh, prices and then Allah says وحرم الله وأحل الله البيع Allah has made trade halal وحرم the increase here is what happens let's say we live in a country and we're going to take uh, for example in Algeria they have a, a shortage <laughs> of olive oil why I'm laughing because Algeria is worldwide exporter of olive oil they have uh, millions upon millions of trees of olive but because the government is corrupt uh, but anyhow so the government creates a shortage of olive oil all right an olive oil bottle one liter let's say is one pound and for this year, it might go one pound, ten pounds, or ninety p. So it's 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 business. You can add a little bit, or uh, no problem. So what they do, they withhold the merchandise of oil until it becomes a huge necessity when people need it. Uh, they need oil. Come on, and then the merchants started bringing their quota of the quota of oil that they have, and they will sell it five pounds. Because and then people will buy it out of necessity. When you uh, in fact it's just one pound, but now they sell in five pounds because of the shortage, and the shortage was deliberately created by these people to increase the way the the, the money. 
That is the interest that Allah has prohibited, is that people withhold merchandise, increase the, 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 the wages, the, the, the price of that merchandise, and then make big profit. That is, and that's why Allah says in, in the carry on, in the ayat after that, that whoever returns the money and the, the, and keep the, the head, the, the, oh, I forgot, uh, the, the main invested money, then they, Allah will forgive them. And if a little bit gets mixed up, that's fine, but you should not. So that's the interest that Allah has forbid. Not that you take money, and, but anyhow. So that's uh, number 16, wearing red colors for men or any vivid colors is haram. And they will tell you it's haram in your face and you obey them. Wearing trousers, oh God, and performing salat in them. And uh, is it halal to look at the butt of a man when he's making sujood? And the sheikh will say, no, it's, it's not halal, it's haram. As if when you wear a qamis or the long dress, the Arab dress, when you make sujood, you have this, I don't know, like you get the air that blows in that qamis and, and the shape of your butt doesn't show. We humans for the love of God. My butt is just like your butt. If my face is... <laughs> but sick people will take the issue more and far beyond what it should be. But you know... Eating with the left hand, they say it's haram. It's not haram at all. Taking shower every time one has a sexual intercourse with their partner. It's strange. In the books of jurisprudence, they tell you sperm is pure. The human sperm that comes from a man is pure. All right. In other words, if you have sperm in your clothes, you can perform your salat. No problem. And then they tell you the pee, urine, or the poo are impurities you cannot pray with them you have to clean them all right and but they tell you when sperm comes out from you you take a shower but when you pee and you poop you don't take shower what is the logic in this why why should i take a shower when i sleep with my partner what has what, why there is no why in that thing there if someone needs to take a shower, is anyone who, who goes to the toilet because we've just dropped something that is impure. So the thing is, taking shower every time you have sexual intercourse, sperm, penetration, not penetration, when you take a shower, you are obeying people, you're not obeying Allah in the Quran. Uh, for, from now and on, if you, have, if you sleep with your partner, just go wash yourself, like you would wash yourself when you go urinate or poop, and that's that how many muslims they wanted to have to make love with each other it's winter at night and then both of them start thinking oh my god i gotta wake up in the morning for salat al-fajr the house is cold the water is not as hot i don't want to sleep now and all that oh god it, it drives me insane how much these humans have done to allah's islam as opposed to we, I, I want to sleep with my partner. I sleep now. And when Fajr comes in, I just go do my uh, wudu normally and perform salat. Nothing has happened. Yes, I wash my private part and that's that. <sighs> but anyhow, not letting kids play outside at Maghrib time under the pretense that the devil spread out at night. Real strange. It's like the devil's daytime, they sleep. <laughs> they're no, they nocturnal like cats. Daytime they sleep and at night they go hunting. And that's it. <laughs> it's not that. But anyhow, uh, letting your kid pray, uh, play any time of the day is halal, nothing. Maghrib or no maghrib after dark. If it's safe for them, let them play as you like. Eating with fingers and not spoons. And even in the Salafi world, they tell you eat with three fingers. The Sunnah is to eat with three fingers, not more. There are some uh, fatwas in Saudi Arabia and the Salafi world that st and before that state that when you eat with a spoon or a knife or a fork and you can eat with your fingers instead, but you don't do it, you have contradicted the, the sunnah of the messenger, you have disobeyed the messenger, you have brought the wrath of Allah on you and it is haram what you have done. Number 22, prohibition of shaving the beard. You cannot shave the beard. This is a Judaic one. Go and look at the Orthodox Jews and the Orthodox Muslims, the Salafis. Dress, take the clothes of the Jew and put them on the Salafi and take the clothes of the Salafi and put it on the Jew. 
They look the same. You cannot tell which is... Uh, actually, you will think the Salafi is a Jewish person just by their clothing. Term. And I've already posted on my YouTube channel, Islam Pep Talk, uh, pictures and small talk about the resemblance of the Salafi hijab and the Salafi, uh, the, the Jewish hijab. They are 100% same yeah i put two women a jewish woman and a, a muslim woman and you will not be able to tell which is which because of that hijab the the dress of hijab is completely different and now inshallah i pray to allah that allah gives me life and do a actually i've began writing something about that and just to finish it off but anyhow that's for another day also the prohibition of shaving the head bald in islam they tell you it's haram to shave your head bald. Why? Because of the Khawarij uh, politics again, a group of people that uh, disobeyed Uthman and then Ali and Bahina. Prohibition of growing the nails for women and men. You cannot grow nails because, again, resembling the Kufar and things like that. I go quickly. Prohibition of wearing necklace or jewelry for men, even if it's a string. For pity, and it's haram. Why? Because it's women's thing, and men are not allowed to resemble women. And, and women wearing pants, trousers, they cannot. Why? Because it's haram, they resemble men. That also is not true. You can wear whatever jewelry you want gold, silver, and put one around your neck or 200 around your neck. That's your freedom. The, the next one. <laughs> No, no. The next one is women driving, like in Saudi Arabia, the 27, and we know how rubbish that is. Number 28, education of women. Women must not go to schools, and if they go to school, they must not mingle. And if this, a man cannot uh, teach girls, and get, oh God, it's a headache. And people here in England have withheld their kids from going to school because they don't want education for their children, especially the girls. Again, children playing with toys, dolls uh, for girls and action figures for boys. Why? Because they don't want them to love Superman because Superman is a kafir. The, even there is a fatwa in Islam QA by this uh, Salafi Sheikh who has made it haram for Mickey Mouse to be watched because Mickey Mouse is a rat or a mouse and mice in Islam are impure creatures and it's haram to play or honor them or give them value and things like that thus it's haram to watch mickey mouse my head is uh, it's hurting because of these kind of things dressing with uh, <laughs> with dresses that resemble of other people's faith you cannot dress uh, in a manner that resemble indian women for example uh, of india or Pakistan, um, no, no, not Pakistan, Indian, or Russian women, or American girls, or Latin, no. Why? Because these people are kuffar, and you should preserve your identity. I have a talk about this on my uh, on my channel. Please go there, and you'll see it's got nothing to do with what these people are saying. Wearing clothing to certain length, men cannot wear it beyond the ankles, and women should wear a cloth, their hijab should be dragged <laughs> one meter, and the more it is dragging behind her, the better it is, because it covers her feet, her feet cannot be seen. I feel sorry for women to walk like that, because how many times they're going to fall? All she needs is trip once on that piece of cloth, and off she goes to, for her face to kiss the ground. And man, Look, the Saudis, the Salafis, when they started to come, like, uh, w they needed to wear a suit. From there, you find the suit, the tie, everything. But when you look at their ankle, <laughs> the pants are way up from their ankles. It's funny. It really is uh, funny. But anyhow, so uh, uh, rings for men. Again, men cannot wear rings. And if you wear a ring, you have to wear it in a particular finger and a particular style as decided by the sheikhs. Gold for women. Even women, if they can have gold, but each year they must pay the cat on it. And the confusion is huge there. Halal to have women? Okay, should we pay the cat about it? No, because Allah talks about the cat differently than humans talk about the cat. Number 34, lingerie for women isn't permitted because it's kuffar and it's resembling prostitutes. I feel sorry for the sheikhs and what they have left here. Really, because Allah, Allah has given in women. Women love something beautiful. Yes, we men, we don't wear lingerie because it just doesn't fit us, right? 
But a woman's body is created for beauty. It's for, for, for majesty, for this harmony, for this grace. A woman, God, a woman without nothing is absolutely fantastic. The way she dresses is, Allah has created that for, uh, for in her. She loves that and we love that she loves that and we love that it pleases us how they, she, they are. The sheikhs, no, they want to go between us and the nature of what Allah created us, so much so until, I don't know, someone, someone told me when I married my daughter, that was a huge mistake to a Salafi boy. And uh, when I was talking to him, I don't know what I was saying, and he goes, uh, do you know why the, the bra exists? And I go, bra, of course, I said, it's, uh, it makes it easy for, he goes, no, it exposes women's breasts. And I go, really? Is that how you think? But this happened after he married my daughter. If he said th if he had said this to me before, he would never ever have seen her. And until today, I regret that marriage. But anyhow, uh, so uh, a laundry for women making love with the lights on. Even in Egypt, there is a fatwa by the High Council of Al Azhar. Anyone who makes love to their wife or partner while the light is on that the divorce takes place because why we are not allowed to look at the private parts of each other <sighs> next one 36 and this is uh, this one's gonna blow your mind is washing the feet in wudu every time you perform your wudu you see allah in the quran when he spoke in the quran he asks us to wash two parts of our body and dry wipe over two other parts. He didn't ask us to wash all parts. The parts that he asked us to wash are the faces, the, the hands all the way to the elbows. These must be washed. All right. As of wiping over the head, uh, over the hair, it's just wiping. You don't need to wet your head and you do not need to wash your feet. This is why when we do not find water, Allah cuts the ablution in two. The parts that we used to dry, uh, wipe, we don't touch them in tayammum when we do the dry ablution with the land. And the parts that we wash, the hand to the elbows and the face, we just put our hands on the dust and we just uh, imaginary wipe over our elbows with that dust and then the right and the left and then wipe on our face. So that's that. But the wiping over the head, because it's dry, and the feet gets dropped. And I want you to use your mind. Imagine this. When the Quran was delivered, was descended, it was descended 1,550 uh, years ago, 14 years, centuries and a half. Back then, humanity didn't have the quality shoes that we have today. They lived in the desert, and they didn't have what we have today, they didn't have carpets, they didn't have, the, their ground was not marble, especially in the Arabian Peninsula. Imagine a God that orders the believers five times a day to every time they go for Salah, they wash themselves the way they do. Look at the amount of water you spend each and every day when you perform wudu. Imagine a city that has 5,000 people, they do exactly the same thing at the same time because they all pray at the same time. In a small city that, has, that doesn't have pavement, the road are not tarred, there is no tar, there is no how the roads are today, hard, and uh, if the rain rains, the water will just drift apart. It's all dirt and it all is dust. The moment rains fall, uh, rain falls, it becomes mud. Now imagine 5,000 people, let's take the kids and let's uh, 3,500, okay, 1,500 kids. We have 3,500 people who make wudu. The whole of Medina becomes a pit of mud. Imagine, and people didn't have the tap water. So why would Allah order us to do something that is extremely difficult, that creates a lot of diseases because with the water, the mosquitoes, the flies, it's... Actually, every time when you go make your wudu, wash your hand to the elbows, wash your face, and with dry hands, just wipe over your head, and with dry hands, wipe over the top of your feet, and up to the ankles, and that is the wudu that Allah wants from you.
You see how easy and beautiful Islam is? But anyhow, so uh, uh, let's uh, carry on. So uh, number 39, talking to the opposite sex. And this is a big no-no. And when they talk to the opposite sex, a woman to the man, a man to the woman, they avoid eye contact. Why? Because they say if a man and a woman talk to each other or are together, the third is shaitan. And as such, they created a disease in every Muslim. The moment you look at a woman and she looks at you, both of you will think the same thing, sex. <laughs> when Allah says in the Quran that when two are together, the third is Allah. When three are together, the fourth is Allah, not the shaitan. Allah is there. But anyhow. So number 39, sharing a space with the opposite sex rooms classrooms university and when you got once i was given a uh, talk at the university and there were students and i mentioned these things and one of them came and he goes i can't believe i'm gonna tell you something but then i said go please tell me he goes please don't laugh i said i'm not gonna laugh but just uh, he goes before today before when he heard me speak every time he finds uh he meets a girl especially a muslim girl face to face he always says Astaghfirullah. If he talks, astaghfirullah, and he goes, and, he goes, and I used to say, a'udhu billah shaitan rajim because he didn't want the shaitan between him and her. And he goes, that has created a huge problem for me. I can't look at a girl without feeling guilty. I can't talk to a girl without feeling a sinner. And I told him, and then he said, alhamdulillah, now that I listen to your talk, I feel a lot relaxed and I, uh, I got to stop doing this stupid thing. And I said, and you should. Number 40, prohibition of using medicines for the benefit of natural remedy. And even they have a whole book, the prophetic medicine, the messenger of, and they, they have you ever heard of uh, using honey for everything? Have you ever heard using the black seed for everything and that the black seed will cure you of all diseases except death? When coronavirus came, the black seed well, didn't do anything. And they bring you the hadith of the, oh, there are so many hadiths, really. And all these are lies. Everything that I just told the 40, and I could have told you thousands of them, all are lies. They're not haram. So next time somebody says haram, tell him where in the Quran it says that. And you will have a, 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 a life a lot easier than that. The list can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, but uh, the 40 are enough and a few other examples that I gave in this long talk. One book, though, that I would love to warn you, and if you keep him away from you, if you have it, is a book called the Riyadh As-Salihin, the, uh, the Gardens of the Righteous People. And uh, written by an Nawawi, this book has got thousands of hadiths, Everything from how you should dress to how you eat, how you sleep, and how you talk, it regulates your life. It's a dictator book. That book has caused a lot of problems in our lives. Avoid it at all costs. I come here to the end of the talk, and I pray to Allah that what I said here will help you. Come closer to the Quran. Please, please, please take notes. A real, a real listen to this talk one more time because there is a lot in it and also stick to the Quran. It's safer. It's your guidance. It's the book that brings you the good news and it's the book to which you'll be held responsible on judgment day. There is no Bukhari. There is no Muslim. There is no this scholar said that. There is nothing that. Each, each person on judgment day will be held responsible according to their interaction with the Qur'an and nothing else. The time has come to only listen to the Qur'an. Anything else than the Qur'an is nothing but an act of shirk. I pray to Allah to bless us all, help us stick to the Qur'an, live by it, preach by it, and start thinking on a broader scale for the well-being of humanity. I will leave you with the mercy of Allah and pray to Allah that my talk reaches your heart and I pray to Allah that he gathers us all on judgment day away from the big number of Muslims who will be accused to have abandoned the Quran while we, inshallah, on the other part, we are of those people who did not abandon the Quran who did their best at understanding, applying the instructions of the Quran. This is your brother Abdul Salam and I pray to Allah that this talk will help you bring some closure. It took me weeks 
to make, extreme almost five days to proofread, and two days to record and edit and upload, please make dua for all of us. Salamu alaikum. No need to say that you go on YouTube, listen there, thumbs up. You say, oh, that kind of stuff. But you always 